Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? That's why it's going to work. All right, guys. Um, I thought I'd just do get a bit of a personal touch, a bit of FaceTime, and try and fill in some of the blanks <laughs> to the madness. <laughs> um, go over one or two things. Um, and what I'm trying to do here is there is a plan behind it, uh, to say the least. Uh, wasn't too sure. You know, we never give the game away. Until you, you're sure what you're doing, you, you, well, what your intentions are, you can actually do. Uh, I'm getting a good feeling about it, confident. <laughs> Perhaps I haven't my eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been creating the little figures and playing around with like special effects, per se. Um, and it's not without cause. Um, I do want to do or try and attempt a small sitcom based <laughs> yeah based on a small story told from the perspective of one protagonist a little bit like, uh, you know, the perfect example. You know, if you ask the question, what's the difference between, say, War of the Worlds, the original, versus the Tom Cruise version done by Spielberg? What's what the, 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 the true difference? <clears throat> the second one, the remake is told specifically from one perspective. Tom Cruise and his family. There's no government officials. There's no nothing. The odd light clip and flashback here and there. It's all the members of society in that book. Ideally, it's all from more perspective. So this is the idea of this. It's perfect. <coughs> and set during the first initial lockdown, which again is perfect. So here. So it's a bit of a rough idea at the minute, but if I can really pull it off, well, I'll do it quite well. So just to give a bit of insight, a bit of FaceTime. Um, <coughs> time. So things you've got to take into consideration was time, the event happened, which at the minute here in shitty, Middle in England. <laughs> it's not the best weather. So it sort of kicked in March at the time, didn't it? Of 2020. So, like, gives me a bit of time to sort of prep and sort of get a few things established. If I can do that, well, not worth doing. Um, so it's going to be based roughly um, on. Pretty much <laughs> what happened, <laughs> uh, but something crazy happens in the midst of it, and then, then it's going to be like a bit of an homage to eighties, an homage to the eighties, with a bit of a modern. I'm going to stay away from politics, though. Politics, I need to stay away from that. Um, so it'll encounter a lot of the modern events, but it's going to be told because it can be come on. Let's let's face the facts here. It is quite commonplace at the moment that everything's just regards back to the 80s and I love the 80s I grew up in the 80s so you know born A1 so it, it fits the bill perfectly um, and it gives me a chance to sort of like have a sort of <laughs> little nostalgia for some you know because uh, I've always been very creative and I've always loved the movie industry and special effects especially and I always have a little bit of fascination with the idea of acting and that so um, again while I'm doing the FaceTime thing just get 
trust me, it's not easy to stick your boat race in front of a. That's, that means face for anyone outside the UK. <laughs> um, to stick your boat race in front of a camera and then try and do something effective, you know. Because everyone's a comedian, aren't they? <laughs> but you know, if we can do this right, um, it'll be brilliant. Because I've got some really good ideas for it. Honestly, really good ideas. Um, so my monitors up here, the camera's down here. Um, screen my laptop's knackered, so <coughs> it's good fun. Um, yeah, so that's why. I mean, if you're not connected to the DOS by now, um, you might not be following that long. I don't know, but <coughs> you should have connected the DOS. So I'm making this little figure of me. I want to try and do a little, a little tiny story about a little flight in the middle of nowhere. <coughs> And bizarre encounters. <clears throat> so I made mini me. So I'm gonna try and do a stop motion, like sci-fi-ish small story about um, the arrival of a small being. <laughs> so it's gonna harm ours. <laughs> bit of Chucky, bit of small soldiers, everything in the book. I'm gonna try and do it. It's gonna be similar to sort of humour to like Shaun of the Dead. Hot fuss, it, but it'll start off like uh, uh, like Chucky, like a horror film almost. But it's not, it's not a horror film. But I'm gonna use the same, the same tactics. So um, I'm just painting a little Dini at the minute, uh, so you can get him in the shot here. Yeah, there he is. So let's do a few comparisons. So I'll work with the shadows like down the side there. And keep saying to me, why is he all pissed off? He's not pissed off, he's stoic. Look at Brandon Lee over there. Stoic. Kurt Russell, stoic. Not, uh, I've got an attitude problem. Yeah, men on a mission. <laughs> um, like this little guy will be. So, so I've been figuring out stop motion on uh, the nose. Off your Hitchcock in it. <laughs> so if we do it, I do it right. Yeah, it's going to be something quite spectacular. Um, but we're used to acting, so I'm going to, I, I have to act versus nothing. Um, and then I'm figuring out different things as I go along, like the um, animating the mouth. I'm making different expressions for it. But this shit is not easy. I mean, come on, it's, it's size of a two p. Yes, hello. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, thought I'd just uh, chuck that in there. Um, the little dodgy special effects I've got going on and that. Uh, I'm making, like I say, in the process of making all different expressions, cheesy grins, and. Uh, yeah, it's basically going to be like a. Uh, I'll try and do it as like little, little webisodes, um, but eventually they will all fit together as one complete feature. And again, um, I'll say there. <laughs> yeah, but I've made me a little foot joint for him so. Got a bit more motion in it because I do want to ride the motorbike, and I've got quite an ingenious little plan for that. Um, by using a little GoPro here, my GoPro Seven, I'm going to strap it to the back of my car, I'll stick it to the back of my car, and then get some footage of stick on the bike, just drive around. Um, we have orange street lamps here in the UK. People aren't aware of that. Um, yeah, and get some uh, background plays. Basically, uh, and then I can. I'm going to try and do an armage to any special effects or, back, or rear projection. So I do the rear projection, and then sit the little dude here on the by light, in. and by using orange LEDs on a little rotor motor, I'll build myself. It'll flash bits of light across him like like in the blade when they're on the uh, subway. That was just done using prisms on sticks that spin. With mirrors on. 
and it, it, it worked quite well. The special effects weren't up to much in the day, but I mean, that's, the, that's the beauty of what I'm trying to do here, is, is it looks a little bit shit. Well, that's, that's the... That, that's the <laughs> yeah, that'll be the um, the charm and the, and, the, and then the fun part of it, because it will look shit. You know, what I mean, uh, I don't know. It, might, it depends how I'll how right to get it. So it might not all play out the way I see it in my mind, but normally I I, I end up with you know um, material better than what I started out, what I originally thought anyway. Um, I was capable of, and I will give it my all. Um, so yeah, back projection plate that I made myself, put them on the bike, frame it right, and then a bit of wobble, put the motorbike sound effect in, MP3, post production, and uh, I'll sort of go from there really. Um, and then the little, that used my Terminator um, diorama, Big endo, uh, the little humidifier <laughs> that creates the little bit of little bit of steam, the little fan going past. You can't see what I'm seeing now. Um, <clears throat> it should be interesting. I mean, for anyone who's a big Terminator 2 fan, I've even thought about um, fishing wire on a down trajectory, so far apart. Two on the front wheel, two on the back. <laughs> Little dude on it. We'll see what happens to that though. So yeah, like I say, um, I don't give too much away because it's, um, we don't want to set expect expectations too high either. But you know, I'm just throwing round ideas. I mean, obviously I'm just throwing round ideas. I don't want to set expectations too high, but then again, you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's just, it's not a Hollywood contract, and then, you know, it's just, just some guy, some bloke from somewhere. <laughs> um, just trying to do the best I can do with what I've got. I mean, I've got nothing to lose in doing it, so you know, everyone gets a bit of an entertainment out of it, and I've got something to show for it all, then uh, happy days, you know what I mean? It's, uh, <laughs> Let's have it. So yeah, we'll see what comes of it. You know, it's, I mean, the, the, the main mantelpiece of it all is creating this little guy and re-sculpt the body and then match the clothes and then just got to paint the face now and get the eyes spawn, uh, which I should do in another little video. And I've got to create other little bad guys because all I'm going to say is, um, if you've seen Dark Angel, Dolph Lundgren, that'll, I'll pull little pieces from that. Um, E.T. I'll pull little pieces from that because I'll, to give the game away. You know I mean, if you don't want any spoilers, not that I'm guaranteeing it's going to happen. Stop listening now. <laughs> uh, so, right, <laughs> let me get this away now. He's here for a reason. Where he come from will be revealed, but he's not the only one to come through. Where from exactly we will not know for now. I've well, not, not thought of it yet. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is even taking little bits from paranormal activity. Um, the, the, there's bizarre goings on, and then they can't quite figure it out. I'm thinking some nuts. And then it, it, it's sort of little piece by piece to figure out. Now, I'm not talking story, Toy Story here, but probably a little bit from Toy Soldiers. But obviously, I discovered that there's more than what meets the eye with that little guy here. So we'll see where that, where that, how that plays out and what it leads to. But it's just going to be like just a fun little adventure and just crazy shit. And then loads of 80s armage action and just in one six scale fights and motorbike chases. Hopefully, if I can get it right, if, you know, obviously um, I'm not overreaching my grass, which I normally am. <laughs> it's never stopped me though, so we'll see what we come up with now. I've got to try and like home my acting skills a little bit. Um, I've been studying it quite a bit. Um, Michael Caine stuff. 
uh, everyone's ever been interested in, in like acting and that um, and everyone's sort of most of the stuff I've looked at they sort of you know, specify the obvious really um, so yeah Michael Caine stuff is brilliant it's all about the eyes I've been doing it while I've been doing this actually but I hardly blink hardly um, none of that shit uh, hopefully a few people will sort of get in on the action and bring their A game to do it um, but the most difficult thing is is my limitations so it's not going to be all perfect I'm hoping it's going to play out a lot better than what I thought was going to be as I've already said but um, I'll get a few people to bring their A game as well especially in the the, the, the like cinematography side of it and, and you know, uh, setting up the shots and that. And again, it's a very limited, small space in here, so I don't know. But certainly give them the best, and hopefully, <laughs> um, uh, well, this time next year, say, we'll have something. At least it'll be the ball will be rolling. Um, and say so, yeah, it's going to be a stressful job, but an interesting adventure at the same time, and. Uh, Hopefully you're there to join me, with, <laughs> join me in uh, experiencing it. Because <laughs> uh, what, what I do is as well is little, which I've done a little bit, um, is show little making of it snippets. So, you know what I mean? Cause at the end of the day, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not an ego trip. It's not, it's, it's not like big secrets or anything. Uh, it's just a bit of fun. I'm putting to the test everything I've learned over long course of my life. I've been forty years old now, so I've been following like the makings of movies and been an artist all my life. Then it's felt it just feels like everything's built to this moment and then it's like well why not? <laughs> so yeah, hopefully. I mean the bullet time thing, uh, uh to the actual photography didn't go so well, if I'm honest. Um but it still turned out pretty good. I've also learned loads of different um, editing packages and what have you and that, but yeah. it's all part of the job, isn't it? <laughs> so we'll see what we've got and see how we do with it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give a bit of a backstory now, but it's not going to be too, too story based or story driven. It's going to have a basic plot, what well, there is of it. <laughs> And, and just try and do make it like little basic story structures each time each episode how long each episode will be I don't know but I'm hoping once I get the ball rolling it clicks in my head what I'm doing and where I'm going with it get the first few out of the way it should it should just it's doing the bread and ball work really. it's doing this crap you know building him and getting it look half decent um, and then working out <sighs> Your equipment, because um, that that bullet time sequence um, with my little GoPro, GoPro Seven, it actually runs at two hundred forty frames per second, which is ridiculous. I didn't realise that in itself is like bullet time. You know what I mean? So it's a shame these don't actually move because that'd be perfect. Um, so yeah, we'll see what we've got and where we're going. Yeah, see how it turns out. It might all be a complete fucking disaster for all I know. Um, and like continuity is going to be the other thing um, and like uh, trying to create or I try and code everything you know the thing about movies and that you, you, like most movies are made on like two two, two colours um, or it's got to have consistencies throughout the plot or you, you'll find that the character wears a certain colour during certain times or there's a certain colour Associated with certain things in, in scenes with like really good movies, you don't know you're seeing it, you don't know, but it's there. You know what I mean? Obviously, I'm going to take a lot of at least leaves out of the box of like the greats like James Cameron. I know he's a bit of a tit now, but you know he was the man. And he, you know he was arrogant with it. You know what I mean? He's renowned for his like attitude now, but you know, rightly so. Let the man work. Just listen to the man. <laughs> He'll be all right. You know what I mean? So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so set up colour coding and setting up the shots and that and different things. It's going to be difficult. 
because I'm, I'm well versed in it. Well, I think I am anyway. It's not open or blown, smoke with me own ass. Um, but people are often to get on board to try and help do this, um, which will be interesting. But yeah, um, hopefully, it's just, uh, they actually are bringing something recognisable and, and well knowledge, not just turning up and things can be a DOS. Because the thing is, though, I make some of this stuff look easy. Doesn't mean it is. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's quite stressful. Well, no, it's quite it's fucking horrible. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but it's it's always worth it because you get to the end of it and then you think, right, I've got something to show for it now. Like anything worth doing, it's, ne it's never easy. So, I mean, we'll certainly see. I'll test the measure of me. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I say I would, I would give away some of the plot details a bit more, but I'll give a couple away. He's here on a mission, and I discover something's off when I start discovering little tiny handprints. I set up a security camera and capture footage of a little blurred figure, and then this is the perfect opportunity, really, to sort of like people that can't act or not interested in acting. I can just get them to do a Zoom call because everything was done via the internet, wasn't it? Join the, the the lockdowns and that, so that's a perfect excuse. I can even put a disguise on and you know, once it like a tin, just pre record like I am now, and then react to it. <clears throat> we make Bob, <laughs> who cares? Um, just to give the the story structure, the report that you, you know, everything's going nuts and that, and there's, there's ghostly goings on, and it's a bit paranormal activity. You fight, you're seeing shit move in the night, and then. <clears throat> Little tiny handprints on the side of the bath, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, and then, then there's noises at night, but then you find little tiny footprints. <gasps> things, things missing out of the shed um, on the uh, fridge. Click onto what his favourite foods are, and how did it, I'll leave this one for you all? because it is going to play out in this the same. How did he eventually coax E.T. to expose himself in the end? There's a deal here. It's a lot of trap, you know. It's not rocket science. <laughs> right, guys, I'll leave you with them thoughts for now. And uh, just see where we're at. In a little while. <laughs> so leave that open ended. So yeah, that's it. Motherfucker!